Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Nano. This is a super light laptop. It almost feels like one of those empty demo shells you might see at a department store, but the computer is actually in here and functional. And we're going to be taking a closer look at this thin and light laptop in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this came in on loan from Lenovo. So we're done with this. It goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this laptop is all about. Now the price point on this, as usual, will vary based on the configuration options that you choose. So I found that this starts at around $1,300 at the time I'm recording this video, and it goes up from there. The one we're looking at today is probably gonna sell for around $1,700 if you get the same configuration. I always like to remind people that uh, when you get a thin and light laptop, you pay more. So you can certainly get a better performing computer for less, but it won't be as thin or as light, and it may not have as nice of a display as this one has. Now the display is a 13 inch display. It is 16 by 10, so it's a little bit more square. Uh, so it's good for document editing and web browsing. It's 2160 by 1350 for its resolution. It is IPS, you get decent viewing angles on it. Nice and bright at 450 nits. Now the display also supports Dolby Vision. So if you have an app that's compatible, it will switch into that HDR mode. Netflix is one of those apps that looks great on the display. Uh, just note though that you have to be running the Windows Store version of Netflix to get the best video quality out of it. If you just go to Netflix on your web browser, it will not look as good. Uh, but for things that support Dolby Vision, I think it's a nice display for that. Additionally, it supports Dolby Atmos. It's got four speakers on board, uh, two on the bottom here and two up on the top, and they sound pretty good. It's not the best uh, bass experience, but the uh, clarity of the sound is quite nice, nice and crisp. Uh, you get good uh, spatiality to the sound, especially in Atmos content. So all in, the audio isn't bad on this, certainly good for video conferences and that sort of thing. Uh, you do, of course, have a headphone jack on the side and Bluetooth support if you wanted to hook up some better sounding headphones. The big story on this laptop, as I mentioned at the outset, is its weight. Uh, it weighs 1.99 pounds, just under 2 pounds, or 907 grams. Uh, that makes this computer lighter than an iPad Pro with the Magic Keyboard and Trackpad attached. I tested the 11-inch version a few months ago, and this is lighter than that, which is pretty crazy. Now, this is using a composite for the material on the casing here. It is magnesium and carbon fiber. Uh, inside, you've got a regular Intel processor. This one's got the i7-1160G7. Uh, that is a quad-core chip with the Evo graphics. We'll take a look at its graphics performance in a little bit with some games. Uh, this one has 16 gigs of RAM. The RAM is soldered on, so you can't upgrade it. There's an 8 gig version of this as well. The storage on this is 512 gigabytes. It's on an NVMe drive, a compact one that can be swapped out. Now there's also a less expensive i5 version of the laptop with the same display. But if you're doing anything remotely graphically intensive, I would suggest going with the more expensive i7 version because its integrated GPU is a little bit more powerful than the i5. Even though the i5 has a G7 Evo just like this one does, this one's actually a little bit more powerful graphically, so just be aware of that. Now this is a ThinkPad, uh, so of course you get the familiar ThinkPad keyboard and the uh, nub here. You got a really nice trackpad that is very accurate and comfortable to use. It's got a very nice spring to it, very happy with that. But of course you've got the nub, which I often prefer to use on my ThinkPad devices. Uh, one thing to note is that the keyboard travel is a little more shallow than what you might experience on other larger ThinkPads. Uh, so although the travel on this is deeper than a MacBook Air, for example, it's not going to be as deep as, again, a regular size ThinkPad, and it might take a little bit of getting used to just because the keys don't push down as far. Um, but it feels great to me. Uh, the travel for those really interested is 1.35 millimeters, and that's actually a little less travel than the X1 Carbon uh, that some people noted had a shallower travel versus others. I know people who buy ThinkPads are really particular about their keyboards, so I definitely wanted to get that out there. Uh, this is a backlit keyboard. It's just a white backlight, but it looks pretty good. 
Uh, for ports, you don't have too many on here. Uh, there are two Thunderbolt 4 ports on the left-hand side. Uh, these are full-service ports, so they'll support display output along with power in. And of course, they're compatible with USB as well. So you could plug in a little mini dock or something when you're out on the road or plug it into a larger docking station when you are home. You got a headphone microphone jack over here. And then on the other side, you got nothing. So this is a two port device because it's so thin. Um, so just be ready for that and get your dongles packed because that's all you got for ports. Uh, you do have a fan exhaust here. The fan is pretty quiet actually. Now when the computer is sitting at idle or you're doing less than strenuous tasks like web browsing and email, you're not going to hear that fan kick on at all. It's only when you really start pushing it that the fan will start making some noise. But again, it's pretty quiet for a compact laptop. Although quiet fans on compact laptops often lead to some performance issues, which we'll talk about in a few minutes here. Now I've got the webcam up and I wanted to show you the image I recorded uh, with it a little bit earlier first. It's a 720p webcam. And you'll note here that I'm adjusting the lid to get myself more in frame. Now right now on the desk, I have the laptop in a pretty comfortable position here so I can see the display nicely and type and everything else. But you'll note that I've got a lot of headroom here on my image in the webcam. And that's because I think they angled the webcam a little bit too high on this one. So I'm often having to move the display into a less than comfortable viewing position to get myself more in frame. And that was one thing that I noted here. Now, like other Lenovo laptops, you have a manual shutter that also disables the camera. You just flick that over. It actually puts a physical obstruction in front of the lens and then deactivates the camera, as you can see here. So that's always nice to have. You don't have to put some tape over it. It also has uh, face detection for Windows Hello. And they have another cool feature with this in that if you walk away from the laptop, it will automatically lock itself. And then when you come back over, it will turn the screen back on and then look for your face. And if it detects the face, it will unlock without a password. It actually works pretty nicely. And you can make sure that your computer locks itself properly if you happen to step away from your desk for a few minutes. So that was nice to see on here. And of course, you've got a fingerprint reader here if you'd prefer to use that for authentication. The battery life on this is about 10 hours-ish, depending on what you're doing. You'll want to turn the display brightness down to get the most battery life out of it. If you're doing more strenuous things, that of course is going to impact the battery life overall. But doing the basics here, I think you can get through a workday and maybe an hour or two after the end of the workday in between charges. It also has some fast charging technology to get uh, more gas in the tank quickly if you need to do that. I really like the build quality overall. Again, super lightweight, and it's also very nicely balanced here, which is surprising for such a lightweight device here. So as I'm moving the display around, you can see that keyboard jumps up a little bit, but it generally stays put on the desk. It will go almost flat to the desk here as well, so it's got a good range to the hinge. Uh, this is not a touch display on this model, but there are apparently touch models available. Uh, those will weigh a little bit more, so just bear that in mind. All right, so now that we're done taking a look at the hardware, let's see how it performs. All right, let's do a little web browsing here to start things off. We'll load up Google Chrome. You can see how quickly everything springs up with that SSD on board. We'll visit the nasa.gov homepage, and as you can see, everything uh, comes together here uh, very quickly and renders very quickly. Uh, this does have a Wi-Fi 6 radio built in, and that's how we're connecting to my network right now. And altogether, no real issues here doing the basics like web browsing and email and other advanced web tasks that you might uh, do on it. I did load up my 1080p 60 video from YouTube that we always like to use as a test on these devices. And I was getting a couple of drop frames here or there. We even tried out the new Edge browser, uh, which is based on the same technology as Chrome. And that one was dropping a couple of frames here and there at 1080p 60. So the little bit of performance flakiness there. It could be just a driver issue. We did download the latest Intel video drivers to see if that might improve things, but it was still dropping a frame uh, every couple of seconds or so. You couldn't notice it by looking at it, but it was showing up in the stats for nerds there. So just be advised of that. And on the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test, we got a score of 157.3 running in Google Chrome. That puts this pretty much right in line with other 11th generation i7 based computers we have looked at recently. So if you're doing a lot in a web browser throughout the day for work, this is going to do those things just fine, and it's working as we expected. All right, let's take a look at some fun stuff now, namely games running on the laptop. Now, I want to note that this is not marketed as a gaming laptop. It is kind of your executive 
corporate device for getting work done, but it does have the Intel Evo graphics with the i7 G7, and we found in other laptops that that chip does pretty nicely for graphics. It kind of rivals some of the AMD Ryzen laptops we've looked at as well. And here we didn't see the kind of performance we got out of other similar uh, laptops with this graphics chipset on board. So this is Fortnite running at 1280 by 800, and we were getting quite a wide variation in frame rate here, and I suspect that we're getting some thermal throttling going on. Uh, Jake here, who I pay to play video games, was testing things out and had the laptop running for a while, and you can see that we're just getting a wide variation in uh, frame rate here, even at pretty low settings. Again, 1280 by 800 at the lowest. Uh, next up here is Doom. This is the 2016 version of Doom running at 720p. Not bad. We were getting over 30 frames per second, generally in the 35 to 40-ish territory. But again, we've seen better performance at this resolution on other laptops with similar chipsets from this generation. Uh, this is GTA 5, again, running 720p, lowest settings. Here we were doing a little better, kind of getting up to the 50 frames per second territory, but again, a lot of variability in the performance as we were playing through the game here. So for gaming, probably not going to be something I'll recommend, but that's really not its core purpose. Uh, we did try to load up Red Dead Redemption 2. It did actually run. Uh, we were running this at 1080p at the lowest settings, and we were getting about 20-ish frames per second. Uh, as we were running through the game here, so we'd probably do a little bit better at 720p, but the AAA titles will really struggle uh, on this one, along with many other laptops with integrated graphics. But it's great to see Intel graphics getting better, because a couple of years ago on a laptop like this at this price point, you wouldn't see this kind of performance even out of some of the older games that we just demoed. And on the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark test, we got a score of 1,297. And you'll note here on this benchmark, just like we saw in the gameplay footage, that it is running a little bit slower graphically than some of the other i7 processors we have looked at so far in this generation. Now below the Nano here on the chart is another X1 that we'll be reviewing soon that has a similar i5 processor to what you would have on the i5 variant of the laptop here. And you can see that graphically that one doesn't do as well as this one does. So if you are looking to do graphically intensive tasks, again, go with the i7 version to squeeze as much performance as you can out of this laptop. And on the 3D Mark stress test, we got a failing grade of 79.40%, passing is 97%. And what that test indicates is that when this computer is placed under heavy sustained load, it will have to throttle down to prevent overheating, even with the fan running. That's not uncommon on compact laptops like this. Uh, so just be aware of that. You're not buying a workstation here. You're getting something designed for less strenuous kinds of activities, but it will execute those less strenuous activities quite well. And you can do photo and video editing on it. It's just not going to perform as well as something that can cool itself off a little bit better here. Now, a little bit earlier, we booted up Ubuntu on the laptop to see how well it would perform with operating systems other than Windows. And everything seemed to work pretty nicely. Video, audio, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, everything got detected properly here. And it was a very nice Linux experience in addition to the experience on Windows. And altogether, I think it's a very nicely constructed laptop. I really like the build on this. It's super lightweight, really nicely designed. And if you're looking for something very lightweight to carry around with you, this might be worth looking at. I was surprised when I weighed it that it actually did weigh less than the iPad with that keyboard attached to it. So if you're looking for a nice little Windows computer that uh, isn't that heavy to carry around with you, this one definitely might be worth taking a look at. And again, of course, you're going to spend a little bit more for something that's thin and light. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Mark Bollinger, Sergio Morales, Mark Dell, Jim Callagher, and Steven Sue. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more.
And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv s.